Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to liberally uh, oil or assembly lube on the uh, valve stem. And then because these have been cut and redone, they're fine. I don't need to worry about honing, uh, grinding the valves in. So then that just goes in, just slides in. And we now have a valve stem sticking up in here. Okay, yeah, we can see that, can't we? Okay, yeah. So then we've got the spring seat. Ah, oh, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, one uh, thing I forgot to mention was that on the exhaust valves you have underneath this uh, uh, seat you have a little insulating washer, a heat insulating washer. But you generally only put those on the exhaust, not on the inlet. Um, I'm not exactly sure, I'll be quite honest, I'm not exactly sure why the heat insulators are there, what they're insulating against. I can only think is to try to stop heat from the, the springs getting too hot and hardening the springs. I honestly don't know, perhaps someone will write in and tell me what the actual heat insulators do, uh, why they're there, but we don't put them on the inlet anyway. Um, A, they're not needed, and B, it actually increases very slightly the spring the spring pressure tension is increased because obviously you know there's that bit you know you're adding a washer um and as the i think the inlet valves open more fully than the exhaust valves so you know you're really uh, pushing things a bit and adding wear to the camshaft so uh, i wouldn't do it but when we fit the exhaust valves we'll come on to that okay so no insulator we put the uh, base down and then i will put the uh this, the um, bell, this, the bell stem cap on, bit of oil, the seal. Um, I normally put the seal on after I've put the uh, the base plate in, because on this engine I think you're fine, but on some engines you'll find that you that once you put the oil seal on, you can't get the plate on past the oil seal. So <laughs> I just gen I think on this engine it's fine because the hole in the plate is big enough, but uh, sort of, it's, it's always good. I think uh, I, I always do it just in case. Right, I'm just going to make sure this is fully sealed. There's a number of grooves on the stems, uh, on the uh, guides, and I'm just making sure it's fully, properly seated all the way around. Right, then uh, the inner spring, and then the outer spring. Make sure they're sitting nicely on that cup at the bottom. They're not, un, you know, they're not unseated. Then we put the top plate on, and then we've got these two little collets to go in. So what we need to do now is we're going to take our spring compressor. We're going to compress the springs so that the uh, they're right down, so we can get the collets on around the valve stem. And that will hold everything together. So I'll go off camera while I just, I'm going to put the spring compressor on. This goes on the front of the, the valve underneath. And this goes on, this, this goes on the top of the spring. We'll have a look in a minute when I've got it on. Okay, so we've got the spring compressor on. So the foot of the compressor is on the valve bottom of the valve and then the top of the compressor has compressed the spring I'm going to see if we can see this properly so it's compressed the spring right down I don't know if I can use an extra torch to show you this I don't know so that the uh, the shoulders the shoulders on the valve stem are now exposed and so like as a little volcano we've made there kind of thing a little hole and so we're going to now slide the collets down over the valve stem and so they sit on the shoulder on the valve and then release the valve compressor and the collet should then lock on the top on that top plate and uh, it, we're in it sounds straightforward but it won't be okay so i'm going to use 
a little screwdriver and uh, I've got a little magnet as well give it a go first collet put that in now I tend to find as a general rule if the collets won't go in at least you always get the first one in it's the second one that's the problem now I find that if they won't go in it's probably because you haven't compressed the compressor enough and just give it wind the compressor wind this wind it up a bit more and it'll probably go in but that's as a general kind of rule okay I'm just going to release the compressor a bit I've got the collets in but they're not sitting quite properly I'm just going to release the pressure a bit I don't want to quickly release it at the moment because I don't think the collets are sitting quite right I'm just going to slowly release it until I think the collets are sorry you can't you probably can't see a damn bit of this but I'm sorry yeah, I just want to make sure the collets are sitting on the shoulder correctly before I totally release the, the compressor yeah I think we're nearly there Right, I think we go. It's virtually loose now, so take the compressor off. And there, can we see that? Yeah, so there we have the collets uh, sitting. There's a gap, that's fine, doesn't matter. The collets are sitting around the, the shoulder of the valve. On the top plate and uh, all is good one thing I will do uh, though is it's always uh, quite good practice if just to give them a bit of a bang to make sure that they're sealed so I'm just going to use a bit of wood mm. yeah. um, it's always a so one thing is it's always good just to uh, i always give them a bit of a, a bang on the top just to make sure those collets are nice and properly in and so on otherwise sometimes when you come to just a tap, tap it for the first time you can get a false reading and the last thing you want is for those collets to spring out Okay, so that's the first inlet valve in. I'm now going to repeat the process. I'll do it off camera for the second inlet and then we'll have a look at fitting the valves for the exhaust. Okay, I'm getting ready to fit the uh, exhaust valves. But just before I do, I wanted to just mention these oil drain holes. Uh, can you see them at the, just at the sides of the, uh, of the valve guides? And... Uh, and these are uh, these are on the exhaust, and but there's also a couple on the uh, inlet uh, on the inlets, but but you can't see them because I've got the you know now I've got the springs on. Um, but those oil drain holes on the exhaust, uh, they then drain into where the uh, um, push rods the, uh, go. They drain into the push rod tube hole and down back down into the crankcases because what happens is oil will of course sit around the bottom of the valves and then it it can if you're not careful it can overtop the valve stem and go down the valves so that's why you've got these drains but on the um on the inlets you can't see the holes but of course there's no push rod tube so what it is, they're drilled, and then the oil comes out here. Okay, and then there's a hole drilled in the barrels, which I'll show uh, you in a minute, and that goes down, and so it drains from uh, down into the crankcases again. But I just wanted to mention it, because obviously it's important to make sure that you've got a good, when you put the head gasket on, that you put a seal, a good seal here, uh, to make sure that when the oil is draining down, you know, it doesn't uh, leak 
it can leak and be burnt in a cylinder. I'll just show it you on the uh, barrels. Uh, so here is a corresponding hole, uh, oil hole in the barrels, and that goes down through the barrels and drains back into the crankcases. So again, you can see it's relatively close to the to the cylinder. So you want to make uh, doubly sure when you're fitting a gasket that we've got a good seal here, so that there's no oil leakage into the into the cylinder. As uh, as I said earlier, the uh, exhaust uh, drains they go down into the pushrod tubes. Uh, uh, yeah, no other pushrod cutaway, uh, and so they drain back down via the tappets back into the crankcase. But the uh, inlet they drain back through that hole. Okay, so coming to fit the uh, exhaust uh, valves now. Um, and which is exactly the same as the inlet, the only difference being that we put the uh, that insulator washer on first, uh, which is, I think, to try and protect the um, valve springs, stop them from hardening from um, excess, excess heat. Apart from that, it's exactly the same, uh, and so we're going to fit those valves now. In fact, I'm just going to. <laughs> I've left these in because they're so nice. But I've, I'll take these um, exhaust ports uh, out now, uh, so just so they're not in the way. And of course, we have no oil seals on the exhaust valve guides. Top of the valve guides, they are on the inlet, but no uh, uh, oil seals on the uh, exhaust guides. Okay, uh, so the valves are now. All fitted, all looking great. Very nice, yeah, really good. So uh, now we've got the rather painful job, well, it can be painful, of putting the rocker spindles back in. 